Hey guys, what's going on? It's Eli, back with another review video, and it's been a while since uh, me and him, we've done a review collab, but, you know, we're back once again, and yep, joining me is, of course, my good friend, uh, Trent Martin. It's good to have you back. Thanks, man. Yep. So that's right. Finally, at long last, we're reviewing the third and final installment in uh, this animated trilogy. Um, because, you know, this came out around the same time, you know, as the second sequel, and although it was kind of a, it was kind of a messed up release, because, you know, this, apparently this came out first, and then the, the first sequel, but obviously, for anybody who would be watching these films for the first time, they would watch them in order, so, yeah, so, yes, me and Trent, we're reviewing, go, you go ahead and tell them what we're reviewing. The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars. That's right. The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars. Again, as I said, the final installment in the Brave Little Toaster trilogy. And, you know, I gotta say, for a title like that, The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars, like, that's an interesting title, and, you know, I think best said by Doug Walker himself, that sounds like something from The Simpsons. And, yeah, I suppose, but, you know, still... The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars, it it still delivers a really good emotional and touching story, I think, and the same goes for the other two Brave Little Toaster films. I'm sure for anybody who would discover these films for the first time, they would find them weird, I guess, like, huh, that's an, that's an interesting animated film. But when you watch them, gosh, they are just so heart-wrenching and so on. But... Uh, the story of the Brave Low Toaster is courageous household appliances team up for an out of this world adventure in this animated sequel, third, uh, second anima animated sequel, I should say. The human owners of Toaster, Faucet, and Calculator, new new appliances that appear in this film, and which the owners being Rob and Chris, uh, ha have have just had a baby, but tragedy strikes. When his new when this new addition uh, to the family is kidnapped by aliens, or supposedly at first, like I'm sure to to the audience they would they would think at first it's aliens, but it's not. Now, um, th now the gadgets have to figure out a way to blast off to Mars and deliver their little master from the clutches of extraterrestrials. Not to mention have uh, uh, not to mention save Earth from certain destruction. So yeah, and the that that happens too because the the toaster and the gang they have to stop from Earth being destroyed. So, okay, what what are your like we'll we'll start with you Trent. Like what are you, what are the what are the first things you have to say about the Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars? I thought it was really good. Yeah, it is good. And you know, for me, I remember I I saw this on TV before, maybe once or twice, I can't remember. You know, I remember when uh Disney Channel or and I think uh should I say uh Toon Disney, they showed the Brave Low Toaster films at times and uh you know, the Brave I definitely remember that uh seeing the Brave Low Toaster goes to Mars on TV and um you know, watching it again cuz I had a little I I remembered a little bit a little bit of it, you know, when I saw that for when I saw it for the first time. Like, I remember, like, they go into space, and, you know, there's a baby, and so on. But, um, yeah, re-watching this many times, because, really, because it, it was a nice closing chapter to this trilogy. Uh, once again, you know, you've got the cast of characters. The Toaster, Lampy, Radio, uh, Kirby, Vacuum Cleaner, and Blanky. And once again... Uh, Toaster and Lampy being voiced by De uh, Deanna Oliver, Timothy, S uh, Timothy Stack, and uh, Thorough Ravenscroft, you know, it's Kirby, of course, and uh, Eric Lloyd and Roger Kapler, they once again uh, reprise the roles of Blanky and the radio. They previously voiced them in the first sequel, uh, Brave Little Toaster to the Rescue. Um, and of course, yeah, uh, we also get the re returning appearance of Ratso, because... 
you know, as we all remember, it, at the end of the first sequel, Ratso went with uh, his new family, Robin Chris. So now he's uh, part of the Toaster Gang, and new, um, pro new products that are in this film, Fawcett and uh, Microwave, and uh, Microwave being voiced by Wayne Knight, and uh, Fawcett being voiced by the late uh, Farah, Farah Fawcett. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, yeah. How ironic is, like, you know, her last name sounds like Fawcett, so. And, uh, also, Calculator, and gosh, I totally forgot that he voiced the Calculator, and also Hearing Aid, Foss, uh, Calculator being voiced by Stephen, uh, uh, Tobolaski, if I'm saying the last name right, and, uh, Fivish uh, Finkel voices the hearing aid, and there's some and something about the hearing aid, like something suspicious about him at first. And what uh, at one point, the the toaster like he catches uh, the hearing aid at at one moment, like hearing aid is doing something in the little master's room, like communicate communicating with somebody, and um, you know. When they when they finally ca when they do catch hearing aid, well, apparently hearing aid is supposed to be transported to Mars. But uh, at one point, the little master he wakes up, and um, instead of hearing aid, he gets transported to Mars. Um, and so yeah, it's up to you know the toaster and the rest of the appliance gang, along with you know calculator and hearing aid, to go save. Uh, the little master to bring him back home, um, but also like okay, another thing, uh, the songs because let's talk like talk about the songs. Like, do you remember like come back to Trent? Like, do you remember do you remember the songs in this film? Yeah, I do remember the song "Floating with the Balloons." Yeah, that was that was pretty catchy. The one, yeah, the balloon like the balloons that are singing a song. Like, mm -hmm. we get to know we get to know a little bit of their backstory. Like, you know. When they, when they, before they went up into the air and into space, apparently, there's, there's that, and, uh, there's a, a very sweet song number, this was when, you know, the Little Master first arrives home, and a montage of, you know, the, the baby, like, interacting with the appliances, and, um, yeah, I think it, it was a pretty touching song, and so, yeah, uh, microwave, and, uh, there was also the fan, uh, what's her face, like, she comes along, of course, uh, the ceiling fan, yeah, the ceiling fan being voiced by, okay, yeah, being voiced by Carol Channing, and also, um, w w Winkenstein, once again being voiced by Brian Dole Murray, he comes back, and he helps out, uh, the toaster and the gang, you know, set their destination to Mars. And of course when they f when they do finally arrive to Mars, um they of course come across a bunch of giant uh pieces from like, you know, NASA, they're on Mars and especially Viking 1 being voiced by the one and only late DeForest Kelly. Like this was his first and only animated film that he did and one of his last films that he did before a year later he would sadly pass pass away and uh also cuz um viking one explaining that you know nat like nasa has no plans on bringing me back home a welcome home party and he is to remain on mars for eternity with uh her which being uh tinselina being voiced by uh kath susie and uh you know this Christmas ornament that talks, all she talks about is Christmas, and as Viking 1 says, Christmas this, Christmas that, and you've never even seen the top of a Christmas tree before. Um, and that's when um, they do find the little master, and apparently these appliances, it's like this colony, they... They hate they hate uh, the humans like you know thinking that they were that they mistreat them and this like giant refrigerator like geez like a giant ref like how big is that refrigerator and uh, who is the leader of this group and they're and you know the toaster is trying to tell everybody all the appliances that are on Mars that you know 
the humans, like the owners, they they do like the appliances and, and so on. Like, they are being treated very well back on Earth. And, of course, there's a song number that happens. Uh, and eventually, the toaster does win. And we do find out about that giant refrigerator. Well, even at one point, um, the little master, because, um, well... I think he was trying to, he like, he accidentally dropped his baby bottle and he was trying to reach it, but then he saw his reflection on the giant refrigerator, and with one touch, like, something happens to the refrigerator, something that he's never really felt before, and something just changes him, and he, he changes his ways because of the little master, because of that, and, like, laughter from the baby, and um, at one point they go inside... The refrigerator, and uh, it was the supreme uh, commander, I want to say, and um, yeah, he was uh, voiced by Alan King, who is another hearing aid, and I think, uh, yeah, I think like a, br a brother to the hearing aid, and fun fact, because hearing aid, we find out about hearing aid that his previous master was the Albert Einstein, so that was, that was, that, that's pretty cool. Um, and I'm coming back to Trent, anything else you've got to say on what I so far talked about? Um, oh, really, again, again, I thought it was very good. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, and especially, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, they were planning to destroy Earth, like a rocket was going to be launched to Earth. Uh, but of course, after the Supreme Commander, like, changed his ways, um... This is right before they're about to head home. He forgot to turn off the rocket, and Toaster sacrifices himself along with the Supreme Commander, well, the other hearing aid, I should say, to shut off the rocket, the missile. Only he can uh, deactivate it. And also, um, before that, Viking 1 and Tinselina said their goodbyes and... You know, Tinselina did say that they could still be in touch, and, you know, Viking 1 was like, a uh, long-distant relationship, you know, I think we can, we can handle that. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, the, the missile rocket is deactivated, and it seems like at, at one point Toaster is not gonna go back home, but he does, and, you know, Tinselina sacrifices what she has on her, her her hair, her dress, to put it in the microwave, and that really cranks up uh, the ceiling fan. And a very touching song number where, you know, Toaster sings Home Again, just talking about, you know, how nobody will remember their journey, like, no photographs, no proof, they've traveled far, and so on. And uh, didn't talk about Ratso that much, because he was left on Earth. Well, I mean, he couldn't join the adventure, because, you know, he wouldn't be able to breathe in space. Even Blanky. Blanky was going to remain uh, on Earth as well, because Toaster felt that this adventure would be too scary for Blanky. But he he insisted on coming, and he did, because he needed to be there for the Little Master in case the Little Master gotta chill. And, yeah, because that, because, uh, uh, the Blanky was, uh, the Little Master's priority. So, that, that makes perfect sense. Um, and of course, um, Ratso being, he's in, he's in, he was in charge of, you know, keeping the baby monitor from making noise and to alert Rob and Chris that, the baby was not there, even even when at one point uh, Ratso apparently did a good impression of the little master, you know, goo goo gaga, and they they bought it. So yeah, and um, when they do finally arrive back home, well, they got to hurry up as fast as they can because the baby monitor does, you know, set off the alarm, and well, of course, everything's fine. The little master he starts to walk, and also. The epilogue to this film, well, uh, a little bit earlier, um, when they made it back home, Tinselina felt that it was the end for her and she made her way into the trash can. But uh, the Little Master discovered Tinselina. And, you know, Chris, she said to Rob that, you know, that I learned one thing from you, never throw any anything away, you know. And um, 
you know, she is placed on a Christmas tree, and it's Christmas time, and the Little Master's first words are, Toaster! And he just bringing in all of of the of the of the main characters and one more in a re rendition of home again and um yeah I, I gotta say like i think that was a perfect ending for the brave little toaster uh goes to mars i mean what what do you think trent yeah yeah i like it too yeah well yeah what a what a way to close the trilogy and Th that's all I really got to say. So yeah, The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars. I think it's really good and a fitting way to end the Brave Little Toaster trilogy. And yeah, how how do we rate this? Good question. Like, we'll start with you, Trent. How do you rate The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars? Uh, you're the first one I'm still thinking. All right. Well, because of how much I've said that I think this is, you know, a really good sequel and, you know, a perfect way to end the trilogy. Uh, yeah, it's on my mind. Why not? I'll give this a 10 out of 10, because I really enjoy this. It might be, might be my favorite in the trilogy. I'm just saying. Like, it's it's a tie between that and the first Brave Low Toaster film. So, come back to you, Trent. Like, have you figured out how, you, how you're going to rate this? I'll give, I'll give a 10 out of 10 to you. Okay, there you go. So both me and Trent, we give it a 10 out of 10. And what about you guys? What did you think of The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars? Have you ever seen it? And what did you think of of both me and Trent, our review of this film? Leave comments and give this review a like as always. So and any last words, Trent? Uh, not really. <laughs> okay, well, you want to go ahead and say goodbye? Yeah, bye, guys. All right, he says that for me. Again, we hope you guys enjoyed our review of The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars, the last of the Brave Little Toaster films and in the trilogy. We've we did it. We've we've reviewed all three Brave Little Toaster films. More reviews coming your way. They're gonna be awesome. Keep looking forward, and we'll see you guys in the next video slash review. And me and Trent will be back for more review collabs. Stay tuned. And uh stay tuned because later tonight, um, I'll be reviewing, I think, one of the top best Disney documentaries. Stay tuned for that. Take care and peace out.